Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another fun-filled episode here of Rob's Inner Circle on the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and as always, we promise you we have another great show coming your way. You're going to love it. we got a very special guest, and we really went far, far to go get this guest. You're going to love him. Promise. Okay, a couple of shout-outs before we go anywhere here. The first and foremost I have to do and say here is to acknowledge the excellence of my good friend and the producer of Rob's Inner Circle, Miss Jenny Duhame. Thanks so much for being there, Jen. If the show is as good as it is, well, it's because you're there, Jen. Thanks for being there. Also, another shout-out. Last week, we had uh, the lovely and talented Miss uh, Hélène Russ, the casting director for Voice TV, film and commercial work. She uh, owns and operates uh, Total Casting in Montreal. She's also an author and an inventor. Speaking of which, inventor, she's going to be on the Dragon's Den on the CBC here in Canada. She's going to be presenting her uh, invention. So you guys want to tune in and check this out. ellen has got something really interesting to propose out there to the Dragon's Check your local listings, and it's going to be playing on CBC the 1st of September. And, of course, this September is uh, the beginning of our Women Empowerment Month series, and we will meet with actress and voice artist, acting coach, and motivational speaker, Anik Matern. She is also known for her work as the voice of Musa in Winx Club and her role of Thelma in the TV series Space Cases. And we got some fantastic news for you guys because all of you guys who are Daily Struggles fans, well, it's just about the moment to be releasing episode four. It's around the corner. It's slated for September 2nd. A couple of post-production things that we have left to do, but the little minor things, we should be good for September 2nd. And it's going to be, once again, a barn burner. The lovely and talented Patty Saragossa, who plays my wife on the show. Poor her. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, this time we're all wondering, like we wonder in every episode, is Carmine going to finally get things right? Is he going to do it right this time? Well, if you guys want to find out, you got to tune in, and you're going to find out all about that. And at the same time, we have our good friend and uh, fantastic voice artist, Mr. Art LeDuc who's uh, uh, part of the cast as well. He did another great job on our show. And we got a surprise for you. We got a surprise new cast member coming on. I ain't going to say nothing yet. You guys stay tuned. Within the next week, we're going to be announcing who that new cast member is. And that person is going to bring so much more delight and um, a lot more um, spunk to the show. You're going to absolutely love this other contributor. Yes. And uh, we invite you guys as well to come and subscribe to Bobby Short Shorts uh, on the YouTube channel. Go check out our, our Facebook as well, uh, the Facebook page. We got Rob's Inner Circle and Daily Struggles Facebook pages that we invite you guys to go like as well. And you can follow us for uh, all the, uh, the events that we have coming up, all our upcoming shows and all that. So, guys... And once you're on the uh, YouTube channel, we urge you to go out and check out all our productions, okay? And you want to give us thumbs up, some nice comments, sharing. You want to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you guys are going to be the first to know of whatever is coming up on our channel. Okay, guys, so it's time once again for our weekly ritual. So for all you sinners out there, who are not yet in your pajamas. What are you doing? Come on, let's go, hurry up. Come on, before we, get, we bring our guest on, slip into your pajamas, that's right. And you wanna come back with that nice glass of wine, right? That's right, a nice glass of wine. And then what you wanna do is like kick back, right? Just stretch out your feet on the edge of the table there, relax and just let go and let us carry the load. It's showtime. Let's bring it on. So tonight's guest, guys, he is an award-winning voiceover actor, an author, and international public speaker. His intense, his extensive list of credits includes the Academy Award-nominated Ernest and Celestine, Nickelodeon's Peter Rabbit and Get Blake. 
the Dreams works is Fifi the Cat Therapist and Disney's Violetta and Pokemon. But you probably know him best as the voice of Shinji Ikari from Evangelion. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Gold Coast, south of Brisbane, from down under in the land of the Aussies, Australia, here he is, Mr. Spike Spencer. Hey, Spike. Hey. Hey, circle. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Glad hey, to be Spike. here, buddy. Thanks for being on the show with us, Spike. My pleasure, my friend. Hey, Good listen. Word. What a way to start off the show. Okay, so you're a Texan, right? And and just originally, before, yeah. You and then you're actually from Burbank, California. That's in the Los Angeles area, not too far away, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and now you're in Australia. What happened? <laughs> <sighs> it's a long story, and I'm going to tell you all of it. Okay, go on. <laughs> So, uh, hi everybody. Uh, so I do uh, voiceover work. It's one of the things that I do. Um, and in that realm, uh, I have maintained a little level modicum of fame in a, in a kind of a narrow window, which is anime, uh, dubbing Japanese animation into English. And um, so I appear at conventions internationally and I came down in March uh, to Australia, there's a, a big convention called Supernova. And uh, so what they do is they usually do two, uh, two cities in Australia. They do like, um, and this one was Melbourne and Brisbane. And so, well, actually it was Melbourne and Gold Coast. And uh, so we did Melbourne and while we were down in Melbourne, the rumblings of the coronavirus, COVID, you know, pandemic, all that started happening. Uh, so we went up to the Gold Coast for the second weekend of conventioning. And um, as we pulled in, Tom Hanks announced that he had COVID. And oh. he, we were, he was in the Gold Coast. He was literally blocks away from us. Um, and it was fitting because, you know, I was appearing at this convention with – cast members of The Walking Dead, uh, a vampire from Buffy, and a witch from Charmed. So I was like, hey, if the world's going to collapse, we got them covered. <laughs> so uh, we stayed, we did the convention, and it was not the best, but it's, you know, better. It was okay. And uh, we decided, you know, we, st we were staying an extra week anyway. And then as it just got more and more intense. Things started to get a little weird. Uh, and we were going to go back home but we decided to stay. Just something said, you know, why don't you just stay? And I figured, ah, it'll be fine in a couple of months. <laughs> that didn't happen. And uh, we've been down here now about six months, I guess it is. Was it March, April, May, June, July? Oh, uh, yeah. We're, we're on our six month now. And uh, yeah, we had to extend our visas. So we're here till February because Qantas is not flying out. So... Um, and don't feel sorry for me, folks. The beach is right over there and it's amazing here. <laughs> and guys, you know, off air, as we were just about, we were about to go on, uh, Spike kept going on and how beautiful Australia is. And now he's got me thinking. <laughs> Australia <laughs> seems like a great place to be. It is amazing. I mean, it's, it's interesting because it's me and my wife and our three-year-old son and this is Turns out we made the right decision because this is one of the safest places on the planet as far as it goes. I mean, Queensland is – there's a few you know cases in Brisbane uh, that popped up. But overall, it has not been like you know crazy L.A. If we went back to Burbank, we'd be wearing masks all day and everybody's hunkered down and you know scared and all that. And it's like – it's not like that here at all. Not at all. I, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, one of the first things people are uh, inclined to ask uh, – I just have the impression that the food is amazing down there. You know, yeah, yeah. The um, the food is incredible in M Melbourne. Now, Melbourne is a really cosmopolitan place. Melbourne is um, foodie and the architecture is amazing. I mean, Melbourne is a really, really eclectic town. Uh, lots of great food. We had absolutely phenomenal, mind-blowing food down there. Um, here we've had quite good food. It's not like, oh my gosh, my mind is blown, but that is definitely, I mean, my favorite food city on the planet is Montreal, but you know, that's just me. 
But you know what? It's not just you. Uh, actually, you got a right space because there's a lot of delicious restaurants over here. Amazing, amazing. I've been there several times and I love it. And um, in Australia, though, it, it's the quality of the food, like going to the store, buying, you know, produce, et cetera, et cetera. The quality has been absolutely top notch. And I live in California normally. So I'm from Texas, moved to LA 15 years ago, but, and now live in Burbank. And California, the bread basket of the freaking world and the, the stuff we get is not that great. Oh, really? Yeah. But you got a lot of good wine down in the Napa Valley, though. That we do have. <laughs> and I'm a bit of a winer. So, uh, you know, as the Australians call people who uh, like wine. And uh, I've tasted in every, pretty much every wine region in Australia. Okay. Um, and the Australian wines have gotten a lot better. Definitely. Okay. So uh, now that you're in Australia, why don't you throw a couple of expressions at us, um, you know, that you learn in Australia? Ah, right. Good eye, Mike. Um, <laughs> It's interesting. It's funny because um, I'm not really great with the Australian accent yet. I'm getting a little better. It's funny. I just did uh, an accent for a video game on Saturday, and they said, "Try your Aussie accent." And I'm like, "Okay." And they're like, "We love it." I'm like, "Great. Let's do it, mate." And uh, I was like, I, "I don't even know, but it's rubbing off on me." So you know, good eye. Um, one of the things is they they love to put. Uh, like shorten everything like uh, Woolworths. I'm going to go to Woolworths. I'm going to Woolies. You know, <laughs> if you're in school, Oh, I'm going to school. Um, you're at uni university. Oh, oh you're wow. at uni, And uh, you're a schoolie. Okay. And um, I found that funny. we I learned the, um, uh, if somebody's the Australian sense of humor is really about taking you down a peg. It's like, you know, when two guys get together and, hey, you jerk, hey, you tool, yeah, whatever. You know, and they're messing with each other. You know, they love each other. Australian have that sort of um, attitude with their humor. So when they're messing with you, it's like if you get sensitive to it, they're like, oh, come on, mate, have a cup of concrete nodding up. <laughs> hey, listen, I learned an, uh, an Australian expression myself, and I just got to get it out there. To crack open a, th a tinny. Well, close. Yeah, crack open a tinny, mate. Uh, yeah, tinny <laughs> is a can of beer. There you and go. They don't drink Fosters down here. It's like saying everybody in America drinks Miller Lite. <laughs> <sighs> oh, wow. <laughs> they have so much good beer here, and Fosters ain't in the top ten. <laughs> do they have any Canadian beer down there? I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure they do. I'm sure you can get it. Okay. Uh, uh, Spike, I wanted to ask you, um, you're in the world of anime. So what is the difference between anime and cartoons? Because people confuse that a lot. Well, see, anime is, it's Japanese animation. It's a style. And if you look at, um, like we were talking about, you know, we grew up back in the day and uh, like Speed Racer, this anime, right? So mm -hmm. Speed Racer is early anime you got a lot of early animes back then and now it's just a craze it's everywhere um and i was fortunate to be on one when i was in houston um it was uh a division was pretty much the big dub house in america so everything was coming in from japan and being dubbed at a division in houston that's where i got my start back in the mid 90s and i was very fortunate i had the lead role in evangelion which became a phenomenon uh, and it's been around forever. They've got Evangelion World in Japan, I believe. Um, they had some of their bullet trains were plastered with Evangelion. You can get Evangelion merchandise everywhere in Japan. Uh, and I've been the lead voice for 25 years up until the Netflix uh, redubbed it. And I may still do. There's one more rebuild. Uh, they did the original episodes, three movies then. And then years later, they came back and did a full thing called the rebuild. So they did one, two, three, and four is supposed to be out now uh, in Japan. And so then it would be being dubbed within the next year, I would assume. So I may do it. I may not. Don't know. But um, <laughs> anime, to long story, let me get back around to your answering your question. Anime is not always for children. Oh, okay. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> you know, people think, oh, it's a cartoon. It's great for kids. Don't set your kids in front of any random anime people. Because <laughs> there's some crazy stuff out there, especially if it's, if it's hentai, which hentai. is anime porn. Oh, my God. Okay. No, you don't know. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you need to know. 
He needs to know these things. Uh, hey, the Japanese have some interesting ways, interesting culture. So you got to be careful with that. But like things like you know, Speed Racer, Pokemon, those sort of things. Absolutely. I mean, those are those are fun, family friendly. But uh, yeah, it's it's good to know some things. <laughs> okay, well, we got a question here from General Chris. We're going to go back to the anime uh, spike if you if you don't mind. But he's asking. Uh, it's up in the screen right now. What's the food you miss most uh, being in Queensland? Bacon. Bacon. <laughs> you bacon. Got, really? American smoked bacon. Everything down here is they've got something called streaky bacon, which is kind of close, but it's just it's not. It, it's not bacon. Um, and it's it's ah yeah. I really want some some bacon. Uh, that and Tex Mex. Okay. Um, like there are some Mexican food places here, but like you order nachos, beware, beware, beware. You don't know what you're getting. <laughs> uh, so I'm making my own salsa now. I'm I'm working that out because you know, uh, so I'm I'm getting that done and um, yeah, I miss I miss that. And uh, gosh, what else? Well, there's certain things that I miss anyway. Like even in LA, I miss Whataburger. If anybody's from Texas uh, or in the middle of the the country, they know Whataburger, and I miss, always miss Whataburger. But uh, Whataburger. yeah, I think those are the two I miss most right now. What's a Whataburger? Whataburger is a uh, fast food chain that started in Corpus Christi. Okay. Uh, man, I mean, back 40s, 50s, I don't know. And it's just uh, it's what I grew up with. Like people in California go, oh, in and out. Oh, you got to have an in and out burger. <laughs> That's plenty of them. They're okay. But <laughs> what a burger. Hey, to go back to the anime and the cartoons, uh, if you want to compare the both, um, give us an example of what a cartoon would be uh, versus a, an anime production. Well, it really comes down to some of the technical aspects of it. So, uh, anime is what you're going to do. You're going to be dubbing it. So it's just known as ADR, so automated dialogue replacement or additional dialogue recording or in ADR. And that means you're dubbing it into English. So when I go into the booth uh, and I see whatever project we're doing, they'll play it for me in front of the screen. So I get to see that scene and it's already been translated into English and they've translated it to match the mouth flaps on the screen. So there's the technical aspect of it. So when they record it, I'm doing the performance of that line based on those mouth flaps. So it's really kind of confined. It's hard to go big sometimes. You've got, you know, you want to really do something big, but the character is doing this. And it's like, yeah. it doesn't make sense sometimes. Um, but that's what you have to do. You're really, really confined to those parameters. And in animation, regular animation, it's, any kind of style. Anime is usually one specific style. When you look at it, you go, that's anime. Um, any other uh, uh, cartoons, uh, etc., cetera, can be a huge realm of styles, like, like Rick and Morty or the Archer, look at Family Guy, look at uh, The Simpsons, etc., all different styles. And that's also known as original animation, which is you get to go in and work uh, with sometimes you get to work with other people in the room, but a lot, even if you're just by yourself, you get to go crazy and record however you want to, because you don't have, you're not confined to those mouth flaps because they animate it later. Okay. Yeah. And so that's kind of, that's kind of some of the major differences between the two. Um, and of course the original animation is if you want to talk about money wise, that's where you want to be. The Holy Grails are like the Simpsons. Uh, I'd say the Simpsons is the Holy Grail. You know, 30 years of talking funny and having fun and getting paid extraordinarily well. That's that's the that's the Holy Grail right there. Hats off, huh? Uh, okay, so there's a lot of anime in Japan. Uh, how about cartoons? Are they are they a thing down in Japan? You know, I really, I honestly don't know. I couldn't tell you. Uh, I've only been to Japan once. Uh, for three weeks and a uh, long time ago. This is back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I did have my head shaved by a Buddhist monk at a Buddhist temple in Mount Koya. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> when in Rome. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> I've done um, a lot of adventurous stuff, my friend. <laughs> okay. So uh, you just like um, found out recently that Goldorak was very big here in Quebec. Yeah. Uh, and that's anime, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I would say that would be anime. Yeah, okay. it's like the early stuff when everything was, you know, big mechanized samurai warrior type things. Like I was telling you before, I, I have, um, when I was a kid, one of my favorite toys was the Shogun Warriors. And it was like a two foot tall, you know, big you know, plastic, but it was, you know, had the the big Shogun and everything and like the fist that would shoot things out of it. And uh, that was just the coolest present. I still remember that. <laughs> Okay, um, so you're an actor who is known for your voice work in video games, animation, and anime dubs. Can you tell us more about some of these projects? Uh, sure. I mean, like some of the things that are going on right now, um, like I got a lot of stuff on Netflix, um, like Kingan Ashura. Uh, I am the uh, announcer on that one. Kingan Ashura! <laughs> that sort of thing. And, uh, oh, quick side note. So while I'm shooting Kingan Ashura, so this front tooth right here is actually fake. Oh. And like about a year ago, this tooth basically fell out because oh. it had been a long story, rum, dancing, bar stool, craziness. And <laughs> you remember when we were kids. Um, <laughs> so uh, I had it, you know, they drilled it up into the root. Well, the root finally died apparently. And oh. suddenly my tooth was just like, dunk. <laughs> and so there I am toothless about to have to go record. Ouch. And so I had to go get the, the root pulled out. Oh my God. Which was lots of fun. Ow. Can you imagine. <laughs> but literally two days later I had to record. So I had no tooth and they gave me this little flipper thing that you put in. If anybody's had a tooth replaced, you know, it's this little flipper that it's kind of there, but it's perilous at best. <laughs> okay. And so I go in and I'm recording. I'm like, guys, you know, I've got this little thing. It's up here in my 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 tooth. So I can I can I can speak clearly, but it's going to be a little bit of a shh 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 going on, right? <laughs> and they said, okay, we'll just have to take some more takes. I said, cool, no problem. So then it's like, King and I shut off, and my tooth goes, <laughs> it flies out, oh, and wow. I have to go, excuse me, and I, you know, I get out and I go pick the tooth and I pop it back in. And I was like, okay, here we go, let's try it again, King and I shut off. <laughs> I go, I gotta get it. So I finally got it. it was King of Ashura, you know. So there's a couple episodes where he sounds a little off. Okay, so that's why. Yeah. So that's uh, one of the the big ones on Netflix. Of course, um, you can find Evangelion on Netflix, but that's not me. Okay. They redubbed the whole thing. There was a, a bit of a drama back then, but I'm like, hey, good on you. Do what you want to do. It's your job. It's your thing. Ow. Do what you want to do. <laughs> um, but I'm on uh, something that's pretty big right now called Boruto. It's the follow-up to Naruto. Um, I've got others, but I'm not sure what's actually out and been released now because of all this craziness. So I kind of can't like say, here it is, but I just say go to IMDB, which is uh, internetmoviedatabase.com. So it's just imdb.com and just punch my name in and you know, most, a lot of what I've done will be up there. A lot of it that I've done is not on there, but that's like, I don't know, there's like two, 300 uh, roles there. So you'll, you'll, you'll find something and you'll be like, oh, I know him from that. Um, <laughs> I don't, I honestly, I don't know what's popular right now because sometimes we'll do a job and we're like, oh, this is such a great title. And we don't hear about it until a year later. And they say, oh, now it's released. Now we can talk about it. So yeah, uh, NDAs. There's also Fajin on Netflix. Oh, what? Fajin. Fajin? Yeah, it's on Netflix. What is Fajin? I'm sorry. Agin. Agin. A-G-I-N. Oh, A-G-I-N. Ajin. That's, yeah, that's that's an old one. Um, Black Butler is probably a good, a well-known one. Um, I play Snake on that. I don't know if that's on Netflix, but um, that's a that's a very popular one. Uh, I'm also, uh, and I play snake and there, uh, he does, he has snakes that talk, all these snakes that talk. Um, and they're all in, they're all British and one's German and one's a woman. And I do all the voices of all, oh, wow. every snake. Yeah. So okay. that's an interesting thing. You're up to 13 voices. So, oh my God. um, for him and that, but that was a, a while back. Um, so I've got a couple of things. Like I said, I just recorded yesterday and I recorded before I left another big project, but I can't say it. Yeah. Sworn to secrecy, huh? Yeah. Well, it's going to come out eventually. Yeah. I mean, it, it will come out eventually. And uh, I've learned not to say anything about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I know people that have had some issues that are like, oh boy, you shouldn't have said that. 
that was not something you needed to say. <laughs> well, we all learn, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I mean, so you, most most people will know me from uh, Evangelion. That's you know pretty much the the big one. Uh, oh, here's one that's out. Zozo Zombie uh, is out. Um, that's a fun one. I've done a lot of characters on that one. Uh, something called Cagister. Um, of course, Barbie Dreamhouse Adventures. If you you know you got some kids into that. Persona Five, Shinmu Three, um, da, 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 Fire Emblem. Oh, right. Playmobil, the movie. I was in that. Spike, did you want to show us maybe some pictures or something that you had? Uh, you want to share with us? Um, well, if you want to, if you want to see um, my demo, uh, I can my play the demo for you. Sure, sure, sure. That'll kill a couple of minutes. Okay, hold on <laughs> a second. Let me uh, share the screen, which is. Show you, boop, mate. Boop, 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 boop. Here you go, mate. Yeah. There's no, uh, I don't have any Australian on there, mate. No, no, no. How do I do that here? I do that. Click on that. Why is it doing this? Okay, can you see it now? I can see it. There you go. This is it. Okay. Can you make Listen it up, a, people? A little Every bit person bit. here is me. Oh, awesome. Here. Are fake but turn out to be real grandfather clocks taxes texas parsley when people turn around and go yes. you're trespassing <laughs> no time to waste turtle booty awaits <laughs> ah, meant to do that need to flex the old groin muscles don't give me that hoity-toity fancy chart I was rich before your punch even fell out of the tree. I could have beaten that box on my own. No problem. I'm the scary and powerful and fearsome shrew. I am Rook, High Archer of the Grey Elves. Commander, some really bad stuff is going down. Twitches, insecurity. Doctor, I did not come here to be insulted. I just want my bloody bunion removed. <laughs> What took you so long? I thought I'd never get rescued. Oh, let me stay. I'll sweep the poop deck. I'll even poop first, then sweep it. Karate! <laughs> How about some flying rat tail? I'm a lethal weapon. You want some of me? What? It can't be. The white tigers are out of the race! Allow <laughs> <laughs> well, me to introduce myself. I'm the Rattle King and your announcer, Void Do. <laughs> And there you go. How did how did you not twist your tongue with that last one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny, you know. There are so many crazy things that we do uh, in in characters, and it's just you just find you know what what you can do. Uh, a lot of times, I'll say, "Hey, can you do this?" And I'll go, "Let's find out." <laughs> Give it hey, a go. Hey, move over, Mel Blank. Wow, that's amazing. Oh man, I, I he's my he's my hero. Anybody in the voiceover industry, if they don't know who that is, it's like, oh my friend, son, sit down. We're watching some Looney Tunes. Ah, there you go. Uh, yeah, actually, Barney Rubble from the Flintstones. That that was Mel That's Blanc. True. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's done so many. Uh, apparently, he's a, a man of a thousand voices. A thousand voices, probably at least. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so listen, uh, uh, let's go into your movie career a little bit here. So you appeared on screen in scenes with four Academy Award nominees, such as Sandra Bullock, Tommy yep. Lee Jones, Frank Langella, and Alan Bates. Which movies are we talking about here? Uh, okay, I'll start uh, from the beginning. Alan Bates, uh, a lot of people don't know who Alan Bates is. Uh, the older generation will, will know who he was. There was a film called... Um, uh, Simon Gray's Unnatural Pursuits. Uh, and it was like one of my first TV roles. And I really, uh, I was a waiter and I came and I was talking with Alan, uh, and, you know, about uh, his order. And I thought it was weird or something. And um, it was also with Bob Balaban and Paul Guilfoyle at the same uh, table. Um, and then uh, down the road, I went to Miss Congeniality. Uh, now, all this happened when I was in Houston. Uh, because Houston was a hub of, you know, there was acting in Austin and, you know, Richard Linklater and, and Tommy Lee Jones was working out of there. A lot of people were working out of Austin. Uh, and then there was Dallas, of course, and New Orleans. And uh, so I worked with uh, Sandra Bullock next on Miss Congeniality. And it's funny because I was just talking to somebody the other day about this. Um, I got cut out of the, the movie. So when she, if you saw Miss Congeniality, when they're in the club, they're eating pizza and they play those drums with the paint on it and all that. 
uh, me and two women came up and started giving harassing all the girls and giving them a hard time. Oh, you're beauty queens. You're stupid. And of course, Sandra Bullock, you know, puts us down because she's incredibly smart and just puts us in our place. And we walk away, you know, oh, and uh, so I got to work with her for two days, uh, you know, just right there. And the weird thing, I never met her. That's the sad part. I never met her because she did the thing uh, where, you know, the camera was on her and then they turned it around and then it was on us. The camera was on us, but then she wasn't there anymore. She had somebody else just reading the lines, throwing them out to us. I was like, oh man, <laughs> you know, like, I just like, I'm working with Xander freaking Bullock. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. And um, anyway, so then I got to work with uh, Tommy Lee Jones for, uh, was that next I think it was next. Anyway, so it was for a film called The Three Burials of Melchiatus Estrada. Oh. Yeah, I know you didn't see it. Um, <laughs> uh, it was, the screenplay was up for an uh, Academy Award, I believe. Uh, I forgot what year it was, 2003 or something like that. And um, yeah, I got to work with him, which was fun because uh, I was playing a soap opera star. And the fun thing, I, I, my great story with Tommy Lee Jones is when I auditioned for him. And I was auditioned for a different role and I made him laugh. And I was like, the strangest noise you'll ever hear is Tommy Lee Jones actually laughing because he's <laughs> a, a fun guy. He's a very nice guy. And he was just laughing. I'm like, oh, that's a genuine laugh. I've only heard your like laugh on screen, which is kind of weird. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's awesome. So then uh, this was, I don't know, wh whenever we auditioned, then it was like a month or two between the shooting and that. So he went off and got into character. And he came back and he was all scraggly and the hair down to here. And, he's, and he was uh, directing and it was me and a girl and we were doing a soap opera. So we were the soap opera stars that you see uh, on the little TV uh, in, in different scenes throughout the movie. And uh, he come out, he, uh, I got this great shot. Somebody took a picture of him looking at me on the screen, which is a great little you know, nice shot there. And uh, we did our scene a couple of times, went down, drove down to Austin, did did our run through like three, four times and we were done. And he's like, he came out and he goes, well, you are as good as any soap opera stars I've ever worked with. Is there anything else you want to do? And I said, sir, can we please run through it just one more time? And he said, great, go nuts. <laughs> took off. And he said, action. And we just went, took it to the rafters. You know, just, we soap opera it up. So <laughs> You it soaked great. it up, huh? Soaked it up, baby. <laughs> uh, and then I got to work on the Disney film called uh, Now You See It. And uh, that was uh, five weeks in New Orleans. And New Orleans and NOLA, baby. And I, I love New Orleans so much. So I was called New Orleans. And um, yeah, I ate a lot and had a good time. Walked along the Mississippi and I got to work with Frank Langella, um, which was funny because I met Frank Langella in his underwear. So oh, that wow. was it. <laughs> he's like, we're going to run some lines. He's like, come on in. And he's in his uh, little, you know, in, in his trailer there. And he's like in his underwear, walking around, talking lines. I'm like, oh, here's a line. Da -da. He goes, give me that line again. I'm like, da -da -da -da. I'm like okay, I'm in Frank Langella's thing, beard with, in his underwear. This is an interesting day. Uh, and it was so funny because there's we did had this scene once, and I'll never forget this. He had this look that he had to give me. And if you ever saw him as Dracula back in the 70s, I mean, he's got a stare that is just like, damn. And I got that sucker full force in this one scene. And I'm just kind of like, oh, <laughs> it was like, wow, Frank Langella just gave me the glower. It was super cool. Um, and it was a lot of fun to work with him. And it was a great shoot. And uh, anytime you get to spin down in New Orleans is, is wonderful. So that's my story of those folks. And, uh, uh, one other I got to work with was Scott Glenn. Um, he's one of my favorite actors as well. Uh, I got to work with him in a, in a movie, which was fun because I got to, uh, it was a, it was called the faith of my fathers. And it was a war movie about John McCain's, uh, John McCain actually. And, uh, so we got to get in the, uh, helicopter and they lifted it up about 10, 20 feet. And then they action. And then they landed and we get out with our guns and we're running out and, you know, taking point. And we've got real live, military we got like four of them we got we got marines seals etc and there's they they go boom 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 they you know get out in their points and everything and i'm standing there i deliver my line and and i'm from texas i do know how to own how to work a firearm right <laughs> and so i'm holding it down safe finger off the trigger etc and i know you know it's like you pull it up like right? 
And that's how I do it. I was in a safe spot. And I hear the director and he goes, is somebody tell him how to hold the gun? <laughs> and I'm standing there. I'm like, is he talking to me? <laughs> and I look over and the, the, the military guys heard it. And I look over at the military. I go, go. And he goes, <laughs> uh, whatever. And, and then I hear, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> hey, you know, it's like how privileged you are because you know, uh, it's a lot of work, uh, of course, but when you're on a set and you're filming, you know, it's it, it's more play than work. I mean, you're just having fun. You're having a riot. Can you compare this really to work? You know, the thing is, it's boring for most of the time. <laughs> because if you, you know, got to do it over and over and over. You're wait while you're waiting in the in the uh, you know, if you got a little trailer, you're waiting in the trailer most of the day. You know, and they finally get everything set up. You go in, you do your scene, and then they go, okay, break. We got to switch everything. An hour later, you're like, okay, come back and get in character. <laughs> That's an hour if everything goes well, eh? You know if that. If everything goes yeah, well. Exactly. So, yeah, hurry, you know, hurry up and wait. So, yeah. <laughs> but I, I haven't been on ski, on uh, on camera uh, since 2005 oh. um, when I moved out to L.A., although – you can see me on a docu series on Netflix called Being Dad. Uh, that they followed me and Kim around uh, while she was pregnant, and then you get to see Declan, little Declan, being born. Oh, not the gooey. That's, that's on net Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> called Being Dad. It was from uh, the um, uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul production company, okay. and it's it's a great show. They follow like eight different dads. And we were the only one who were actually having a baby at the time. Okay. You know, it's an interesting story because I'm 19 years older than my wife and, um, you know, having a baby, my first baby at 48 was oh. a bit of a story, you know? So okay. like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> so, uh, you attended the university of Houston for four years and you received a baccalaureate degree in the honors uh, program as a drama major. After mm -hmm. doing a number of independent films, you auditioned for Anime English, dubbing for at ADV Films. Mm -hmm. um, how did you make that switch? Well, first of all, let me say, you know, having a baccalaureate degree from the University of Houston, majoring in honors in drama, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody gives a crap. <laughs> I've never been asked for it. Nobody cares. They're like, can you do the job and do it well? Yes. Yes, I can. So um, I was actually doing a live action movie. It was a little independent film that I never got released, I guess. Um, and one of the actors on there was Amanda Wynn Lee. Now, any anime fans know who she is because she was Ray in Evangelion and about a million other projects because she worked at ADB as a director and writer. Okay. And uh, so we were on this live action film together and she was like, Hey, come on. Why don't you come over and audition for some stuff over here at ADV? I'm like, does it pay? <laughs> She's like, yeah, great. I'll check it out. Because I didn't know what anime was really. And when I saw it, I'm like, going, oh, it's a cartoon stuff. And like, mm, not really. That's different. <laughs> okay. Um, so I went in because ADR is a different animal. If you are in, if you want to be a voice actor and you know, people say, oh, I'm, I've got a good voice. I can be a voice actor. Great. Go try to dub anime. Go, go try to do ADR at all. It's a different skill set. It's like using, um, uh, if you you know what I'm talking about when I say uh, audio prompter, mm -hmm. you know, it's having that thing that runs into your ear and you record it and then you press play. And as it's going, record, in, playing in your ear, you say the words out of your mouth. That's another skill set for acting, right? So these are things you have to know. And uh, I went over and they're like, can you do this? I'm like, let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> That's your motto. That's it, man. I was like, great. And apparently I was able to do it for pretty good, pretty well. Uh, I auditioned, got a role in something. And then I think two more projects after that was Evangelion. And I did a lot of projects uh, at ADV. Um, yeah. So it was interesting that that was another thing. See, in a little difference between Houston and LA. In Houston, you do everything. You're an actor. What do you do? Everything. Commercial, mm -hmm. radio, industrial films, film, TV. It doesn't matter. I'll, you do everything. Uh, and then if you go to L.A., they say, what do you do? Well, I've been in some video games. Oh, you're a video game actor. No, no, I'm an actor. I'll, I'll do everything. Uh, what about, oh, I've done some anime. Oh, you're an anime guy. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm a, an actor. I do, so you just do voiceover. You're a voiceover guy. No, no, no. I'm, I'm an actor. I, do everything. <laughs> yeah. Very bizarre. Yeah. 
So what are the differences, uh, you know, being in front of the camera in AVR instead, uh, let, let me rephrase that, hang on. What are the differences in being behind the camera in AVR instead of in front? Um, oh, it's a world of difference. So in front, you know, if you're acting in front of the camera, obviously you've got your frame, you've got everything you need to do, you're visual. It's completely visual. Every little thing you do, every nuance matters. In uh, ADR, you're stuck in a booth, there's no camera, and you're watching and you have to match mouth flaps to either an animation thing or, you know, even I, I had to match mouth flaps and did ADR on some work that I did on a show called um, The Big Easy. Uh, it was a series, USA series in uh, back in the 90s. Uh, I had a recurring character in, in two seasons. And I had to go in and do some dubbing, some ADR for that as well. So, I mean, it, you can ADR anything. Most movies will have ADR on them because, you know, they'll do a big crowd scene and say, oh, the sound wasn't that good. We're going to go into the booth and they'll fix the sound. Um, and you, it's interesting though, because you are actually more restrained, more restricted with ADR because A, the mic picks up everything. So if you've got an incredibly sensitive mic, you can't move. And yet you've got to be, it's a fight scene. And you're like, I, I can't move. Because <laughs> every time they go, oh, I heard your jacket rustle. Oh, I heard <sighs> the zipper, whatever it is. And you're like, you know, so it's, it's an interesting style of acting. You have to really be intense internal and not move that much. So it's all voice. It's all done up in here. So do you have uh, a preference? Yeah, I'd, I'd rather be on camera and doing original animation for sure. It's free. It's freer, you know. Okay. And by the way, did I mention I have a baccalaureate degree in it? <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we can. so since 2005, you haven't been in front of the camera. Is that something you're looking into, like eventually going back in front of the camera acting? Not really. No. Uh, you know, it's it's a whole animal. If, if it happens, it happens. And if it does happen, it'll probably be on something like uh, like food game or, you know, don't kill your date and other cooking tips thing. Like where I do a, a travel show or a cooking show or something where I'm like the host and doing something I enjoy. And that, that could turn into something down the road. I mean, if somebody says, Hey, I got a lead role in a comic sci-fi thing. You want it? Yeah. Uh, you know, sure. But I'm not, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the audition process and it's just, it's so annoying. I'd rather just do my own stuff. You know, I would, I'd rather produce, do my thing, st stuff that I find funny that makes me laugh. And if people watch it, great. If not, I got paid to do it. Eh, great. You know, if you can make yourself laugh, you're definitely going to make someone else laugh, right? That's it. Somebody's got my sense of humor. Somebody gets it. If you know my Facebook, if you see my Facebook page, I'm posting all kinds of silly stuff because it makes me laugh. I'm like, somebody's going to find this funny. Other people are going to be twisted, you know? <laughs> <laughs> There's an audience for everybody, for everything. Yeah. I don't care if you say there's something wrong with this boy. Okay. <laughs> and it's a wonder, you know, uh, when I found out you were from Texas, uh, I was asking myself, okay, and I was talking to you, where's that Texas accent? Ah, well, you can't have that. Howdy. Uh, <laughs> you can't have that unless that's your thing. Like Matthew McConaughey, he's got it. Okay. But, uh, you know, I never had that. And be doing voiceover, you learn what's called the mid-Atlantic dialect, which it really doesn't exist. Okay. But it's just talking very clearly so that people can understand what you're saying on, you know, radio spots, TV spots, et cetera. So uh, get a couple of glasses of wine in me, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're an international public speaker. You're an author and the creator of Don't Kill Your Date and Other Cooking Tips. Uh, yep. which, which books did you write? So um, I wrote, I've written three books um, and I used to, uh, two of them, I used to just sell at conventions where I would speak internationally or through my website and I sold them as CDs. I turned them into audio books and sold them as CDs because I, voice actor, and um, that was great, but now nobody has CDs. So uh, I have to convert with the times. So um, the three books started all with um, how to be a freaking genius voice actor, step one. Uh, and that's all about just using your voice as an instrument. It's not about marketing and, and all that, about becoming a professional voice actor. It's just kind of showing you the ropes. And then um, I came up with what happens at the con stays at the con. And this is a series of short stories that I wrote based on stories 
that were either told to me at conventions, crazy stuff that happens behind the scenes, or things that I might or might not have instigated. <laughs> and I made them little short stories that are quite fun. And uh, so uh, I turned that one into a book and put that on, it's on Amazon. So you can get that one uh, on Amazon now, because if that's called volume two, I added some more stories and did some behind the scenes stuff. And so now it's an actual book that you can get. The, the big one that I got was um, I was doing a panel uh, at conventions internationally called Don't Kill Your Date and Other Cooking Tips. And this is what got me started on, you know, coaching and all of that. And it was all about being more confident as a man and being becoming more attractive and magnetic in the dating world because that's what I was going through at the time. And uh, so I turned that into a book, into a, an actual dating kind of cookbook called Food Game, A Man's Ultimate Recipe for Dating Success. So that is on Amazon, and I got that to go to bestseller in two categories. So that was pretty cool. Um, got some good reviews, and it does work. It absolutely works. I know because I field tested it. <laughs> Say, Spike, uh, yes, you've yeah. often um, okay. You're often invited to speak at Comic Con, and you've attended Montreal's Otakuthon. Uh, tell us about your experiences there and how you are welcomed. Absolutely. Well, first of all, uh, so to, to be clear, there are a lot of comic cons, different ones around the world. Uh, whenever somebody says comic con, it's usually they're talking about Los Angeles or San, San Diego's comic con, the big one. I've okay. actually never been there. I don't think uh, I may have gone there once way back in the 90s, but I don't I don't remember if that's the, the case or not. Uh, but I don't really go there as uh you know, I don't, I don't really go to that big one, but I go to comic cons all over the place. Like, um, otaku -thon there in Montreal is a fantastic convention. One of my favorites. Um, and you know, it depends because every comic con has its style, you know, every, like there's anime cons that you can go to in teeny tiny little towns. You can have one in Erie, Pennsylvania, or, you know, uh, somewhere in, I, Idaho, Iowa, whatever. It doesn't matter. They're, they're all over. And they're usually small events. Sometimes it'd be as, as many as like, like 300 people, the whole thing. I've been to one where there were 20 people. It was sad, <laughs> but it was lovely because those 20 people were awesome. But uh, you can go to big ones where, you know, I'll walk out and be in front of a thousand, 2000 people, you know, in one shot. And that's great. I love those. The bigger the room, the happier I am. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been wonderful. The, the response we get is just, they, they love our work and I love the fact that they love our work. It's a nice validation because you don't get to, if you, you've done theater before, and if you've done theater, you know, instant gratification, curtain goes down. Yay. Well, we never get any applause. Okay. So we go to a convention. There's our applause finally, you know? So it's uh, a lovely thing. And we get to meet so many amazing people. We get to meet amazing fans and we get, that's actually where we get to meet other actors that much. Cause we don't see each other. You know, I mean, most all of it's all of the voiceover stuff, at least in Hollywood is done in Burbank for the most part, uh, or at least that, that area. Uh, and you know, you'll see people going in and out of the booth. It's like, Hey, what's going on, Wendy? Hey, what's up, Johnny? What's going on? Good to see you. I got to go in the booth. Okay. Bye. You know, and then, <laughs> That's how fast it goes. So when but, you get to go to a con, we get to hang out and have a glass of wine. But it's so love. serious down there that actually some people come in dressed up as, as superheroes. Oh well, that's 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 de rigueur for. A, a <laughs> yeah, it's called cosplay, and everybody. That's the whole thing about the con. The the cons. Uh, I see somebody said fan expo in Toronto. Done yes. that one as well. Lots of fun. Uh, I did a fan expo in Montreal as well. Okay. Um, and it's great because you got people in, in costumes and it's wonderful. You know, God bless you. Let your freak flag fly. Some of them are really, really creative and amazing and immense and spectacular. Some of them are downright disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them. Yeah. But it's always fun, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got General Chris here who's got a question for you. Do you ever watch your own works? I'm going to sum this up very simply. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Um, I'm my worst critic. So, uh, you know, once I'm done, it, I would be like, oh, my, I could do it better. I, I can do this. I can do that. It's like, you know what? No, I can't because I did what the director wanted. Therefore, I'm done. 
So if I go back, it's just, it's just a pain for me. It's like, I, ooh, uh, uh. actually what's very funny is I've been, uh, I've gone into a session where they've replayed some stuff and I'm like, that's a cool voice. Who is that? Is that such and such? And like, like no, that's you. <laughs> oh, I didn't know I could do that voice. Wonderful. <laughs> cool. Um, okay. Uh, Spike, what are some of the things you teach as a voice artist? You know, I'm here right now. Why don't you put me to the test? Well, let's say, uh, for example, if I'm doing teaching uh, voice work, normally um, I'm, I'm not really doing much, uh, you know, on, on teaching people to use their voices and become a voice actor in this sense. Usually I do coaching like for business and stuff or confidence and magnetizing personality stuff. But the basics are the basics no matter what. But I think what would be fun for your people is to let's design a character. So let's, for you, let's do a character. So what I would first say, normally for a character, I, you know, you show me the character, the picture, and I automatically get a voice in my head. <laughs> but that doesn't always work. So okay. we say, okay, let's design a character. And this is what I'll do with my, um, when I'm doing a live thing, I'll say, let's do a character. So I say, there's about three or four things we do. And then you get a character. I say, okay, high or low, which one do you want? High or low? Go for low. We'll go for low. Okay, so low, you're going to start with a character with a low voice. So it's going to be down here somewhere in your body like this. <laughs> so if you want to talk like this. So give me give me a little something like to say, I am the one. I am the one. Perfect. Okay, we got high, we got low. I am the one. We're just going to use that one line right now. So you say I, high or low. And then we're going to say uh, breathy or gravelly. Okay. You want, you want me to say that low? Which one do you want, breathy or gravelly? Pick uh, one. Breathy. Breathy. Okay. So it's low and breathy. So what it would be more like low and breathy. <laughs> okay. So because see low and gravelly would be low and gravelly like this. This is low and gravelly. <laughs> and see, it's real simple stuff. So, so you got low. You said, I am the one. You've got a right. deep. Now try to make it breathy. So you open up your chest and go, I am the one. <laughs> So is that what you want, what you want me to do? do? It. Go for yeah. it. I am the one. There you go. <laughs> See? And then we would, we would add other layers on top of that and say, well, uh, where's he from? Do you do a particular any particular accent you like? Oh, uh, my do? God. Oh, uh, jeez. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, an Italian from Italy trying to speak English. Okay. So say, I am the one, deep, breathy, in an Italian accent. Me and the one. Uh, no, no, I'm gonna start that. No, over. you went. See, you went. You went up here. Yeah, yeah, because Italians talk loud. That's why I'm gonna have to tone exactly. myself down here. But you know, there is somewhere there is a, an Italian man who's talking yeah. like this. Me, the one. I am the one. No, <laughs> I am the one. <laughs> okay, so you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna go into anime now. <laughs> This is fun. <laughs> yeah. So now whenever I'm teaching somebody that, then you can go with other layers and different places, placement in the head. So if you've got, you know, I am the one, you got deep, breathy, and Italian, then you can put it in the side of the mouth. I'm like, I am the one. I am the one. <laughs> There's am di one. different parts. And you just play around with it. And after about, you know, two minutes, you've got a, a fully formed character. Um, another, uh, thing that I would do when I would teach as well is maybe not even hold the voice. You don't even think about the voice at this moment, but I would give them a character and I'd say, okay, uh, it's like, what is the character that they're going to give you when you're looking at an audition? It's like, okay, this person is, uh, 25 to 35, uh, a King's right-hand man, somewhat conniving, blah, 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 blah. So you'd go that and I'd say, okay, this is the character. Da, 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 da. I read that off and say, go. I call it the one minute character. And you just start talking. And you start talking about that. Well, I am a king's right hand man. So I probably know a lot. So I'm somewhat regal, actually. And uh, but then again, I'm I'm scheming. So maybe I might have my voice up here a little bit. So I'm I'm somewhat <laughs> scheming. And now it's <laughs> flowing and then maybe i was hurt in the war and maybe i have a slight hump and now you understand ha that's what <laughs> so you just play with it and and have fun with the characters and i think that's uh that's an, a way to work with your voice once you know this is what 
uh, how to be a freaking genius voice actor talks about. It's all about using your voice as an instrument and understanding opening the throat or closing nasal passages. <laughs> or <talking laughs> down here, away up here. <laughs> hey, That's Spike, I, I can swear I'm hearing Robin Williams. Am I right? I'm <laughs> presuming that he is one of your idols. You are absolutely correct, my friend. Uh -huh. Aladdin, I nailed it. Aladdin is sheer genius. I oh, is that did, awesome or what? He did 80, I think he did 80 voices in that. No way. Yeah. When See, you break I it knew, down, you're like, whoa. <laughs> I, I knew he did Aladdin, but uh, I didn't know he did that much. Well, remember, listen, when he's when he's doing Aladdin, he's doing tons of voices right and left. It's okay. Like, oh, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> he was, it's too bad, though. What a loss, eh? It, it was my wife cried when she heard that. I mean, he's just, I've always loved Robin Williams. I start remember Mork and Mindy, man. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what, well, I just started on Happy Days. And then, yeah, uh, that, as Mork. That's right. And then they had the offshoot, Mork and Mindy. And he was starring in there with Pam Dauber. I remember Pam her Dauber, well. Right. Great actress. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's go into something else over here. You're also a coach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you're not a life coach. Right, we we went uh, through this like uh, behind the scenes. So you're yeah. a coach. Tell us what you do as a coach. Well, it's funny when people say life coach. Uh, my wife came up with such a good one because she is a, a high performance coach. I mean, she helps okay. people go from like double their income and you know bring in 500k, you know, in in a few months. I mean, it's really quite amazing. She's incredible at that. Um, and she said it this way: people, go, oh, are you a life coach? Like, no, I don't want to be with you for the rest of your life. I want to be effective. And help you win. <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, your wife and I have to have a talk. It's something about your 500K, I'm very interested. I know. Okay. She's very good. Speaking of so, which, your wife will be on our show in the month of uh, September. She's slated to be on the 14th of September. Yep. So absolutely. You don't want to miss that show, do you? Don't miss that show. And actually, I forgot to tell you. So today on iTunes, on my podcast, Mind Scrambler podcast, uh, my first interview is with her, and it dropped today. Okay. And, and that's the one that lasts the longest because you got 31 podcasts that you've done, which average about a half hour each, and uh, yep. they're very interesting. And, yep. and folks, you can uh, hear uh, Spike's podcast on his uh, web uh, – web, uh, what is it? Well, on the website? Well, yeah, your, your uh, website, yeah. Icon. Yeah, yeah, it's on iTunes. It's or called iTunes. the Mind Scrambler Podcast. So okay. yeah, check that out. Um, and she was actually, she was my last uh, interview. My first one was a like way, you know, many, many moons ago. I'm getting better, I swear. <laughs> so uh, so coaching wise, here's how it kind of started. It's interesting. Um, mind if I go in some of my background a little bit? Sure, go on, go on, go on. Yeah. I've got an interesting story. And this is what, if you, if you know anything about me, you probably know the story, but... Um, so 2005 in Houston, when we were talking about like, uh, right around when I was doing the, uh, now you see it with Frank Langella. Um, so I was married, uh, and I had been with her for 13 years and, um, I had done real estate cause I, I flipped houses. I learned, uh, how to, you know, do real estate with no money down, no risk to you, no credit check. And I used to flip houses. Um, and I did about 60 of those. And I was, I was actually a, a, on paper, I was a millionaire and I had a, a big house, 4,000 square feet with a dojo and a pub and, uh, three dogs, nacho, fajita, and burrito. <laughs> and, uh, you know, things were going good. I was starting to do more film as well. I had properties, I had a business that was happening. Um, and I thought I had things really good. And apparently I didn't, uh, my wife, uh, we weren't communicating and she wasn't happy and she ended up having an affair with my best friend. Oh. Not my best, best friend, but my best pal at the time. Uh, and that was it. It was done. It was over. It was like a, an atom bomb. It was literally, uh, once I figured it all out the next day I filed for divorce. I was like, we're done. Mm -hmm. I'm out. Uh, lost everything. Uh, literally everything is like an atom bomb because it, uh, even my family was her family and his family. So it was like Christmas is Thanksgiving. You know how you go to people's houses. I didn't really have, I had some cousins that I would go to for a little while and that's it. So that was all of my family was gone. Oh, wow. uh, my house was gone. Uh, I had to file for bankruptcy, lost every property. I lost everything, literally wow. everything I knew and loved and moved from Houston over to LA knowing four people and didn't have much money. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So um, that's the backdrop for my, if you want to say, origin story. 
<laughs> and uh, your uh, and that led me into coaching by way of anime, believe it or not. So I learned in LA. I started getting in touch with you know personal growth and self help again because I I knew that I I, I had studied it but I didn't embody it yet. It's like when uh, one of my coaches he says you understand it but you don't know it. You don't know the personal growth and self help. You read about it, you try to apply it, but it's all surface level. It's like saying you understand what a broken arm feels like, but until you break your arm, you don't know it. And that's where I was. I was in the process of man, I gotta know this stuff. And so here I was 35 years old. I had to start dating again. And I'm like, I got to start my life over in Hollywood. And I spent all my money <laughs> on, if you know, I don't know if you guys have these in Montreal, but the casting director workshops, which is basically a paid audition. You go in, you spend 40 bucks, 70 bucks, whatever it is. You get in there with a room of people and you read sides and audition for uh, casting directors and agents. I, I was in front of 75 casting directors and 50 <laughs> agents. Oh, wow. I spent all my money and got three auditions. Oh. Didn't get an agent at all. Okay. But here's the thing. And I understood why, because I was toxic. I was still in a bad, bad place. And I was, I was, that energy was emoting and it was, it's not a good thing. Right. So um, I said, all right, I've got to figure this out. And I started down the personal growth, self-help thing. And I was always spending all my time in uh, the bookstore at Sunset and Vine. <laughs> there was a Barnes and Noble there. Uh, I think it was a Barnes and Noble uh, or Borders. And I went in there and I would just read the self-help section, self-help section. I would read dating, relationship, you know, everything about, you know, strengthening myself. And I started getting better. And then at about the same time, I told my friend, Amanda, I'm like, I just want to travel the world, eat food and kind of have fun. I want to see things. She goes, oh, well, go to conventions. I'm like, <laughs> what? what do you mean? And she's like, you know, you're famous, right? I'm like, no. <laughs> like, yeah, conventions will fly you out to sign autographs and meet people and have fun. And so I started doing that and I didn't realize, wow, that's a big deal. And so like literally uh, a couple of months after that, maybe along the course of a, a year or so, I, uh, I, I ended up down here in, in Mel Melbourne. In Australia. I'm like, oh my God, I'm spending two weeks in Australia fully paid. I'm like, what? <laughs> Crazy. So, um, but going to different conventions, there's what's called panels, you know, like in, in business places, it'd be breakouts, stuff like that, right? So they would have panels, and I'm like, going, well, I need to make money. So I got to figure out how to do it. What do I know? Voiceover. Great. I'll write a book. Brrr, hammered out the book, wrote it. Uh, initially, it was Print it out, two-sided. I'd staple it and fold it in here. Give me 20 bucks or give me 10 bucks at this time. <laughs> and so I started doing that. And I'm like, okay, I'm making some money. Uh, and then I just kind of got more and more. I was like, wait a minute. So I can give panels. I can give talks. So uh, every time I go to a convention, I develop these panels where it's like, okay, I'm going to do three panels. How to be a freaking genius voice actor. What happens at the con stays at the con, which was the fun one. It was always like Friday night after 10. <laughs> <laughs> and I will have wine with me. Uh, you know, that's the adult fun craziness. And then I would do um, don't kill your date and other cooking tips. And that was usually Saturday night, you know, because it was more adult as well. But I was sharing with people how I was dating. And I, it was rough at first. Believe me, it was just me being somewhat obnoxious, but I was delivering information that I knew. And I was working on, I was doing the field research. You know, I was dating in L.A., at a really rough time in my life. So it was, you want to talk about a proving ground. And it went on to develop it as don't kill your date and other cooking tips. So it all started from dating and relationships, which brought me my amazing wife, Kim, seven years later. And I, then she would go to panels with me and I'd bring her up and I'd say, and she would say, well, here's how he got me. <laughs> <laughs> And she is phenomenal. You'll you'll meet her and you'll be like, what? But you know, at the time, she was um, she had just been a Miss Congeniality in the Miss California contest, um, and then or, or not well recently before that. So she was twenty four, and, and I met her, and um, we just hit it off, and, and we've been together ever since. And it was amazing because I just say, all right, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to talk about dating and relationships, proof. 
<laughs> and she would come up looking fantastic as she does. And she would just say, okay, here's what he did. Da, da, da. Listen to this man and give me the mic back and said, thank you, baby. And everybody's like going, whoa. <laughs> and that expanded because we both decided, hey, you know what? We love doing this. We love teaching people and helping people with their mindset, et cetera. So we got certified in NLP, certified in the bank code. She's certified high performance coach. And that's that's all great, but it really comes down to results. And you go to my website, spikespencer.com, look through and you'll see all kinds of testimonials and stuff. So I do know what I'm talking about. And uh, I do love coaching. Okay. Uh, Spike, uh, we have a fan. Uh, I want to go back into what you were doing now, but we've got a fan here, Skyflame28, who's got a question for you. Which anime show did you like working, Spike? Which anime show did I like working on? All of them. Easy answer. <laughs> okay, well, that, that's clear yeah. enough. <laughs> it's really true. I mean, all of them, uh, you know, when you do a job, you do a job, you like the job, it's a job, and it's great because it's you're working mm -hmm. as an actor. You know, it's like, you know, what your favorite job was the last one <laughs> that was a great one, and you know, what's even better, the next one <laughs> that's a great philosophy. Absolutely. They're all wonderful and they all have their own styles and things. Um, some of them are, are different because you get to have fun with who you're working with. That's really what makes it all makes all the difference. Like um, I love doing the Evangelion rebuilds in uh, in Dallas with Mike McFarland, one of the funniest human beings on the face of the planet. And we just laugh our butts off. And I tell I say, look, it's so funny. Milk will come flying out of your nose and you haven't been drinking milk. <laughs> That's how funny it is. Hey, uh, for all you guys out there who are single and you're in the dating scene, Spike over here, he's got a story to tell you. Uh, one of the most daring stories I've ever heard. I'd be afraid to try this because I probably got slapped out. But Spike, tell us how you met your wife. What's that pickup line you were talking to, to me about? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So in, in my coaching, if I'm if I'm doing like dating uh, coaching, if I'm doing my panel, I say, everybody, I'm going to give you the best pickup line in the world. <laughs> Watch this guy. It's amazing. All right. So <laughs> here it is. Hi, my name is what's yours. And say your name, obviously. Don't say Spike Spencer because that would be weird. So you say hi and you say what your name is. Here's the trick. It doesn't matter what the hell you say. That's how you say it. <laughs> How you say it. There are ladies right now going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. I tell guys, I say, you could go over, you could roll over there with your underwear on your head, jumping up and down on a pogo stick, speaking Klingon. But if you do it in the right way, she's going to be like, well, this is interesting. <laughs> well, what if she answers you, well, I, I'm not single, but it's complicated. Then what do you do? <laughs> All right, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> so here's what I did. Okay. Uh, so we met at a, a entertainment mixer, uh, in, uh, West, not West Hollywood, Westwood. And, uh, it's, uh, a great little place called Barney's Beanery. And, you know, we're all hanging out and everything. And she's talking to some of my friends because she had just, um, she was actually there because she was a screenwriter for a film called Bro starring Danny Trejo. And that film got produced and picked up by Lionsgate. And so the guy who did the sound mixing on that knew her and said, hey, come out and hang out and meet some folks. And she's like, cool, let's go. So she goes there and she's talking to my friends and I'm coming down the stairway. And I see this beautiful girl. I was like, wow, a beautiful woman. I'm sorry. <laughs> beautiful woman. He said, fine, chica. She was wonderful. <laughs> and I was just like, hello. So I walk right over and I go, hi, I'm Spike Spencer. What's your name? She goes. I'm Kim. I said, great, Kim. I got one question for you. Are you single? <laughs> and she's like, um, well, it's, you know, it, it kind of had a, you know, it, it's kind of, it's complicated. <laughs> I said, great. Then I'm not barking up the wrong tree. Let's get a drink. <laughs> and you went for it anyway. Yeah. And we went and we had a drink and I didn't buy her a drink. I didn't no. buy it. She's a big girl. She can do it herself. Okay. She, she, like, she appreciated that. I said, I said, yeah, I might buy you a drink maybe later. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. See if I like you. You know, so, that kind of thing. Uh, so I guess it turned out well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, that's pretty awesome. Um, well, it's the attitude. It's about the magnetic thing. It's, it's, I can go into it in deep, 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 deep. But it's, it really just comes down to confidence and authenticity. 
you know, because fake confidence comes across as insecurity, okay. you know, so it's, it's, there's a, a lot that goes into it, but yeah, that's, that's part of what I coach. If I'm coaching you in dating and relationships, then I'll, I teach all that. It's all, it's all in the book in food game. Okay. And, and people, you can get that on Amazon. And you also have the audio version if you prefer, but mm -hmm. I, I actually uh, the paper version is the best, right? Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah, how about the new book? Uh, tell us about the new book, Spike. Plug the uh, new book. Which new book? Your new book, the newest one, the, the latest one you got out. Oh, Food Game. That that would be yeah. Food Game. Okay, yeah. that, that's. The uh, one. I was like, well, I'm working on some other ones. If you want to talk about them. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, so Food Game is the "Don't Kill Your Date" and other cooking tips uh, in a nutshell. I went ahead and put it into a book form, and it's got. You know, it's got things for you to do. It's it's a self help book, and it has recipes because food game is quite simple. It's gent this is for the guys and ladies. I've been in front of ladies all over the world telling this and talking <laughs> about these things, and they get it. Women are the ones who I have been on more women centric podcasts because they want to hear what I have to say, and they're like, "How do you know all this?" I'm like, "I did the field research." I listened to you. And they're like, oh, my God, you listened. Uh, finally, a man who listens, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like I listened to them, right? And so I put this, this book together to help men become more attractive because that's what it is. It's not about pickup lines and doing this technique or that technique. It's You can do the best techniques in the world, but if you don't have your stuff together on the inside, it's not going to work. It all has to be done on the inside first, and then you can go out, and then you don't care. Once you don't care and you're like, I'm good either way, suddenly you're attractive, you know? <laughs> and uh, so what I did though, it was, it was kind of out of necessity that it kind of fell to me because I love to cook. So my shtick was, you know, A, I love to cook. I was a non-working actor that much in LA. Actually, I did work, but not like, you know, crazy, 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 super, super successful. I mean, I did pay my bills which is successful in Hollywood, doing what I wanted to do. That's great. But I didn't have a lot of extra income. So I said, well, what can I do? Uh, you know, this is something I teach. It's like, okay, what are your skills? What's your, your good stuff? Mine was cooking and being funny. And then, you know, and I'm like, great. I've got humor. I've got food. I got a date ready to go. So <laughs> I would cook for women and they would come over to my place and even on first dates. And it was great. It was a really, really lovely time, and I can go into depth and detail of why there's so many amazing layers of why that's incredible, but the point is um, cooking for a date, that's simple, right? Sure, but you have to be the kind of man that a woman will come over to your apartment to be alone, secluded, while you wield a sharp cutting instrument making a salad. You know, it's scary. like it could be scary for women. <laughs> You know, so you've got to be that guy where she's comfortable with that, number one. And that's what I teach. And so, you know, it's just it's all about how to become that person, because there's a lot of people out there who are very successful in business, but their relationships are crap mm -hmm. and they need to work on that. And most people don't. That's why most businesses fail and most marriages fail because of those two things, because they're not paying attention to the things that actually matter. We've been taught. We've got to do business. We got to pay for this and do for that. Nah, 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 nah. So everybody's focusing on the wrong thing. So anyway. So I'm picking up some vibes over here, some energy. There's a recurring theme that keeps coming on our show all the time. And I'm gonna throw it at you. And I know what the answer is because I'm feeling it. The law of attraction. Law of attraction. Absolutely. Talk, talk to us about it. Well, here's the interesting thing. So the law of attraction is real. It's true. Um, you can, it depends on how you want to look at it. So if I have somebody that I'm, that I'm coaching, I can break it down. I can break them down on their, their personalities and their strategies, et cetera, et cetera. And I can say, okay, a certain person is going to go, this law of attraction stuff is BS. Okay. I know your personality. I know who you are. I say, okay, do you believe in quantum yeah. physics? They're like, oh yeah. I believe in quantum physics. <laughs> okay. Well, if you do believe in quantum physics, then you know that like attracts like. That frequencies and vibrations that matter because everything that is living and not quote unquote living is living because every cell is vibrating. So there's energy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. 
So if you don't think that things emit different levels of energy and frequency and vibration, then you're denying science, right? You don't want to do that, do you? <laughs> Of course not. not. Okay. Well, we are biomechanic beings. We are electromagnetic beings. So we give off frequencies, magnetic, uh, you know, all that stuff, vibration. And you, I, everyone knows this. Everyone knows this because you've walked into a room somewhere and somebody gives you the creeps. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hair stands up on the back of your neck. There is something not right. You're sensing it. And it's going into your, I guess you want to say it's the reptile brain. It's the fight or flight. It's like going, what's going on? What's happening? <laughs> you know, and that's because we are designed that way. And when you look at it, the law of attraction, like attracts like. If you are angry and meh, then people are going to treat you that way because you're treating them that way. But if you're happy and open, hi, how you doing? People go, oh, hi, how are you? Like, like to like. So the more confident and relaxed and outgoing you are, the more attractive you are. And it has to be for real because that frequency, that vibration that's coming off of you is actual energy. And it's going to be measured now. You know, so it's like, wow, that aura thing. It's like, oh, wow, I can't see it, but it's there. You know, cats can see like 20 levels of sight that exist, but we can't see it. Doesn't mean it's not there. And we're learning now with uh, science that this woo-woo stuff, things that are in the Bible. It's like, wow, that's really true. Holy moly. Um, so it's like belief matters. Confidence matters. That's why people like Tony Robbins are making so much money because it's real. It's true. And they can teach it. And that's what I teach, you know, for guys that want to go out there and, and meet somebody or just, I don't even say go out there and meet them. I don't, don't go to freaking bars. That sucks. Have them come over <laughs> to your place. Make them some beef bourguignon. With that and, knife. <laughs> yeah. And this is the thing. This is one of my recipes in the book. I only put like 10 recipes. So I'm not going to overdo it with everybody. Oh, do all these things. They're like five ingredients or less. I okay. want to make it simple. Cooking is not hard. It's just some simple stuff you need to figure out. I wrote an article called uh, Your Slow Cooker, Your Dating Secret Weapon. <laughs> uh, you know, it's great. You throw some stuff in a pot, put the lid on, turn it on, and leave. <laughs> um, and things like, you know, beef bourguignon. It's harder to spell than it is to make. Really? That easy, huh? Seriously. Okay. Yeah. You put a bunch of stuff in there, throw some wine in, and boop, done. Put it in the oven. Um, and that's the idea. Is like, you know, if you have something slow cooking in your apartment and a date comes over, it already smells like a freaking French bistro. You pop open a bottle of wine and, I mean, wow. Talk about sensory overload amazingness. You know what I'm saying? So okay. uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to date. And the concept is really about personal growth and self-help and becoming that person. And that resonates out into your business, love, and life. That's why I teach relationships, communication, and connection, because that I understand. That's my main thing. I'm not going to teach you, you know, business 101. Here's how you design an architectural firm. I don't know crap about that. <laughs> I know what I know. And I'm good at it. And I've got all the proof in the world you need. So, and you're going to meet her on the 14th. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to be exciting. We're looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. uh, you're in Australia. I'm in Montreal over here. So all this stuff about these positive vibes going on, it travels through the universe apparently, right? Yep. Absolutely. I mean, we could, I mean, if we really sit down and think about this, we could be like communicating, sending vibes to each other thousands and thousands of miles away. Yes. And how does that happen? What's your take on that? Well, it's actually been proven now. Um, was it the Heart Math Institute or Heart Institute, something like this? What they've done, there's, and look it up for yourself, guys, but you can take a, um, I think what they did was they put a monitor on somebody's, I think, I want to say it was their heart. I could be wrong on this, but I, I'm getting the gist of it. And they took a cell out of the heart, like, you know, a little, boop, take a little biopsy or something. And they took it on the other side of the room. And they gave the the heart a little, you know, electrical. And that cell across the other part of the uh, room reacted the same wow. way. Then they took it further and further and further. And it was still doing it. I, I want to say it was like miles away. Wow. So I don't know how far they've gone with that. But it's like this. If you think about it, have you ever been thinking about somebody? Somebody just popped in your head suddenly. Yes, like, all the time. Them forever. And then they call you. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's exactly what that is. Um, and I know people that can that, that are really good. It's like anything else. It's a muscle. You work it. You know, I'm a student of it. I get better and better. It's called manifesting. You know, you know, I want this. I want that. I manifested this trip to Australia. 
I, I, I'm kidding you not at all. I, I believe you. I we were supposed you. to be here. And it was amazing because when it happened, because it came out of the blue and I was doing work at the subconscious work at the time. And I was like, wow, it's out of nowhere. And, and here we are. It's phenomenally cool. It's one of the best things that, that's ever happened to us. So that kind of stuff works. And when you were talking about like, like we were talking about online dating before, I said, so I train and I taught people in online dating and I trained with some, some coaches and uh, on that. And I said, you know, I had a great profile for my dating profile, right? And I had a guy who was a writer, a screenwriter, who was a, an amazing dating coach with talk about online dating, how you write it, how you put it together and everything. And I put it together. And he was like, I said, I'm not getting anything here. And he looked at it. And he, he said, he swear to God, he said this. He looked at it. He goes, this is a great profile. I'd date you. <laughs> he's like, seriously, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. And I said, I do know. I was in a bad space. Even though I wrote it and looked good, it didn't come across as authentic because I wasn't being real. Because it wasn't, I wasn't resonating here with the frequency. It's like you can do something, but if you're not connected to it, then it's not going to work. This is why this is one, this is a quick coaching moment, real simple. You know, people say fake it till you make it. Okay. It's complete BS. It's complete BS because you say fake it till you make it. You, I'm a millionaire. Your heart goes, no, you're not. <laughs> you're like, wait a minute, but, but I'm a millionaire. I'm faking it till I make it. No, you're not. BS, BS. So it's not resonating. It's not in congruency, right? So what you have to do is you have to go what I call the, the intent uh, stair step, the intentional stair step going backwards. And you say, well, I want to be a millionaire. Yeah, that resonates. You want to be a millionaire. That's great. Um, but it may say, you know what? Maybe you don't want to be a millionaire. Maybe you have something subconscious that's saying, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> and it's keeping you from it. And you go, okay, well, wait a minute. I believe I can be the kind of person that becomes a millionaire. Your heart goes, yeah, I got you. Let's start from there. And that's where you start because you're in line. And then you start training from there. You start learning books, et cetera, et cetera. You get to the point where you go, I want to be a millionaire. And I believe I can be a millionaire. And your heart goes, yep, you're good. You've earned it. Let's go. <laughs> and, you know, before you know it, you can, you can become a millionaire. But that's it's not the thing where you say, I am this when you're not. You be honest with yourself and say where you're starting. And then you know where you want to go. And you go, great, I'm on the path. I am a student. And that's that's what everybody should remain a student. Bruce Lee was a student always. So even when he was the master, 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 master. Um, is it better to write things down so that you can better manifest them? Yeah, I would say there's no reason not to. Uh, and it's better than typing them in a, a computer because what you're doing is, is physicality along with what you're doing and thinking. It actually opens up more learning uh, arena. For example, what I teach people is, uh, one of my things with the morning mindset is I have some, I have books that I'll read and I'll read them in the morning. I'll read like 10 minutes or something like that. And I don't just sit down and read it because if you just read something, you're only getting like 10% of it. That's it. However, if you watch a video, you get more. And if you actually do something, you get like 70%. So you can read about tennis. But if you watch a video about tennis, you know a little bit more. But if you take a tennis racket and hit a tennis ball, you get it. So the best way that I have found to do is I will take a book in the morning and I will hold it up and I will walk while I'm reading out loud. So I'm adding physicality. I'm adding movement to that while my imagination is reading the book and, and absorbing more. And I do it in an infinity circle. So there's a symbol to that, obviously, but it also keeps you from getting dizzy. <laughs> you go in a circle and you're like, <laughs> so um, um, all this, oh, sorry, go ahead and finish. No, I was just saying, but that, that's, that's the reality of, you know, adding physicality to things is, is better than nothing because you're utilizing different, you know, aspects of yourself. Okay. And uh, this all has to do with the aura and the chakra and all that. That's all inter interwined, right? Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't go, here's your chakra. I know my chakras. And when I meditate, I do talk about the chakras a little bit to myself um, and the auras and things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the skeptics. So when somebody's like going, here, I want to, I want you to have a crystal. Think about it. I'm like, <laughs> And I'll put it down there. It is. It does. It really is a vibrating thing. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm like, you know what? Show me some proof. Let me see some proof. This is why quantum physics is starting to let people know. It's like, holy crap! 
um, look at something called the double slit experiment. You know, just by observing the experiment, it changed the experiment. If nobody's looking, it's one way. You look at it, it changes. So like um, Dr. Wayne Dyer said before he passed, he said, you know, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And it really is. That's where reframing comes in to, to coaching. Um, and so things like chakras and auras and stuff, people, a lot of times when you say that people are like going, okay, woo -woo. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, wait, 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 here's, here's some quantum <laughs> physics. Here's this and that and yada, yada, yada. You know, it, it's, it's true. As a matter of fact, Michael Crichton, uh, wrote a book called travels and he was doing that. He was going and traveling and learning, uh, about these things that are woo. -woo and he's got a scientific background. And so he went and he learned to read auras. He says, yeah, you can, it can be taught. He learned it. He's like, doesn't really matter that much, but he's like, yeah, cool. You know, and he's, he learned a lot of things and it's an amazing book. Um, and there's a lot about belief and things that we're stories we're conditioned to. Like if you watch the news, stop it, just stop it. <laughs> it's so awful. And it's so designed, you know, if people say, oh no, no, it's just information. Oh, it is not. It is sales 101, baby. And they know they're really good at it. So that's one of the things I always tell people just stop, stop it, stop it. Um, but anyway, yeah. Okay. So, what advice could you give uh, to someone who wants to start off in the business, either an anime or a voice actor or anything at all that you're doing, uh, even in real estate? What's the advice to give to someone who wants to start off and doesn't really know how to start off? Well, a couple different things. There, there are different different animals there. Um, so for voiceover, it's always I would say, what's the what what's the second word in voice acting? The second acting. word, yeah, okay. Voice acting is acting. Take acting classes. Um, you know, you're a voice actor because it's not about talking funny. It's not about the technical aspect of it. It's about being able to be directed by the director in minute little instrument little little bitty bits and say oh i want you to make him one year older or one year younger wow. i want a little bit more anger a little bit less this or that you've got to be able to do that and that's where acting training comes in and then second where i say network 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 meet other people get to know them i get 95 percent of all my work through connections that i've made i don't my agent doesn't really get me anything um, you know, and they're, they're great people, but it's like, I'll get an audition every now and then, you know, uh, and that's, that's, I'm sure that's on me too, but I don't know. I mean, there's a whole lot of different uh, things that come into play, but you've got to get started with the, the basics, build the foundation before you build the house. So let's go right into real estate, build the foundation before you build the house. How do you get started? Knowledge, 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 take courses. You know, you start with a course, defi defending on what you want. Don't get into something, oh, this is going to make me more money. Or this is going to make me more money. Because believe me, you can make a lot of money. You can lose a lot of money. I've done both. And you need to know what you need to know. And you need to understand it. Because people say, oh, I want to flip houses because they saw something on, you know, D the do-it-yourself network or something like that. Oh, flipping houses is easy. Those are shows designed by Hollywood. <laughs> They're bull crap. Right. Do not do not use those because they're not reality. They are a reality show and reality shows are not reality. They are scripted. I know I've been on one. So it's, you know, they want a certain story line. So like, okay, I want you guys to have a fight now. What? <laughs> you know, and they'll make it work. It just happens. So, and they'll, they'll cut it to where it looks like a fight. So real estate is you really got to know your numbers. And you got to take some training. I've trained with so many of the real estate, you know, quote unquote gurus. So I can tell you so many ways of making deals. And yes, you can do it with no money, no risk, no credit, all that. You totally can. It's work. You but I can show, show you that. I mean, that's another one of the trainings that I have. So, yeah. So you're, you're a complete uh, uh, resource. Uh, whether it's Pretty much. Okay. I mean, it comes down to, as far as coaching goes, it comes down to that inner confidence, you know, getting that mindset right and getting uh, that foundation done before you do real estate, before you're dating, or you go out there okay. and do voice work or anything. Okay. You come to Montreal anytime soon? I hope so. I hope I go anywhere sometime soon. <laughs> well, okay. Um, 
I'm I'm currently in the middle of my last vacation. Okay. Um, and we're going to be here till at least February. We, I mean, I don't even think Qantas is even going to fly then. So I don't think there's any place we're really going to go. And we may not be allowed to leave the country if we decide to like, you know, quote unquote, migrate here or stay longer. I don't know. It just depends on what they say. But if we can go somewhere, we'll probably go back to Burbank okay. uh, at least to, you know, s- take care of some loose ends, and maybe bring some of our stuff over. <laughs> Okay. But uh, you know, poor you, I feel, I feel so much for you because you're stuck in that beautiful land called Aussie land. Um, yeah. I'm, I, I feel so, so sorry. Terrible. I, I feel sorry, honestly. Look. Uh, hey, you know what? Kangaroo tastes great. You know, I'm sure that you're there for a reason. You're, oh, yeah. you're, you're, you're supposed to be doing some great things over there down in Aussie land. Yeah, we already are. We already are. Yeah. Kim's business has been building. I'm building my coaching business and I've got a, um, I've got a relation. I mean, I've got a membership group uh, for kind of personal growth and self-help for like the geek world, you okay. know, uh, nerd out sci-fi. Sci-fi is my geek out by the way. And, but anybody's an anime animation, uh, cartoons, video games, comics, sci-fi, fantasy, cosplay, whatever it is, you know, there's not a lot of personal growth in that arena. And um, so I'm doing that to kind of give back and say, hey, you know what? Here you go. Let's have fun with it. And I called it the reluctant hero's journey based on the archetype of almost all of your heroes like Frodo, Bilbo, (laughs) Neo in the Matrix. They're just regular people. And suddenly it's like, oh, my gosh, I've got to be a superhero, basically. You know, I've got to become this hero of my journey. I want to say everybody, everybody can become the hero of their journey. So that's what I that's what I coach there. Okay, so you talked about new books. Uh, what's on your plate? You know, I've been I've got two book ideas. Uh, I'm reluctant to say them, but I'm gonna anyway. I, um, I always have titles. I want to do one for the mindset for real estate investors, and it's for those people that have spent thousands of dollars on trainings and have done nothing. They they'll spend like five thousand dollars on a training. They'll go through the training. They'll make one phone call and go, "This doesn't work," and they'll take the box and throw it under the couch. And I'm like, you didn't try because it's fear. I know it can be done, it, it, but it's all in here. So I'll do trainings for them. And I want to do a book called Go Flip Yourself. And that will <laughs> be, good. you know, hey, get yourself put together and then go do it. You know, I've got freebie that I put out there, how to manifest your first real estate deal uh, with no money, no risk, et cetera. And, you know, that's, that's how you do it. It's, you really got to get in the mindset and you've got the training already. So there's one, go flip yourself. Another one, uh, since I've been on so many um, female-centric podcasts and I've got so much uh, material there, I want to do a a podcast about, uh, for women, not a podcast, I want to do a book for women uh, called You Can't Fix Him Because He Ain't Broke on how to connect better and how to develop the relationship because you're, you're talking to each other, but you're speaking different languages. So you don't understand what's going on. And I think that I can help in that arena. Um, you know, guys and girls, you know, men and women, guys and gals. <laughs> you know, I'm not very politically correct. And I don't give a crap. <laughs> so we're all you, off. you were talking about kangaroo. Did you actually taste some kangaroo for real? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, they're yeah. great. You, you eat those critters. Mm-hmm. See, when people think kangaroos, they're like, oh, don't eat the kangaroos. They're so cute. <laughs> no, no, they're not. The, uh, you know, they're really rough, eh? The wallabies are cute. They're the little ones like, oh, do, 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 do. they're so <laughs> cute. They're cute. Kangaroos are dicks. Oh, really? They're the big ones that come up and go, you know, they'll, they'll move the wallabies out of the way. And give me the food. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, so, and they're everywhere. I mean, they're not everywhere here. I don't, I don't see them here, but um, throughout Australia, I've driven, you'll see herds of them, you know, just, and like, look, look at all those kangaroos. Whoa. And they're very strong. Those claws on them, they can rip you right apart, eh? Dude, everything in Australia will kill you, mate. <laughs> it's like, what is this? Oh, it's a leaf. Oh, it's a little flower. It'll kill you, mate. You know, it's like even koalas. You look at little koalas. I've, I've, I've held koalas and we've cut a, I've pictures of them like four uh, times. And you hold a little koala and it's so cute. And you see this freaking claw. You're oh like, my God. 
that's a cute little claw. <laughs> Don't, Don't kill mess me with him. that. You know, it's like crazy. And they're adorable. But yeah, I mean, they you get them riled up and, and they'll go at you. Oh, we also got uh, these huge spiders down in Australia, I understand. The, no one, the ones you put in the movies there, you know, the big, huge ones about this big? Yeah, yeah, they are no joke. They are no joke. The average, the huntsman spider. The huntsman spider. That, now, these are the, here's the funny thing. There are two spiders that I've seen uh, here, and one of them is an orb weaver. And oh, you, you've got orb weavers in, in Burbank. And they're they're harmless, is what they say. They're harmless. They bite you and it'll hurt like a bee sting and it'll it'll whelp up and all that, but it's not gonna hurt you really. It's just you know annoying. And um I'm like, yeah, but I'm so afraid that if I get one on me, my heart might explode. Yeah. <laughs> so so yes, to me, they're scary. Um, but I am walking down the street, you can see them that big. Oh my god. You can look over on, you know, there's a big web and it's sitting right in the middle of it. The body's only like, you know, that big, only like a, like an inch big, okay. but the legs are like out there. Uh, and it's like this big thing. And I've, now I've seen them in Texas too, pretty big, but these are a little bit bigger. Now uh, the, huntsmen, the huntsmen, they're like, you know, you don't really see them because they don't spin webs. So they, they're hunters. They go on the ground. So they're like, you know, do you have uh, bugs in your house? And they're like, no, no. Yeah, you probably have a huntsman. Okay. <laughs> huntsman. Oh, wow. I don't want to. With a name like Huntsman, I'm scared. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and they can get pretty big. I've seen one at a place we were staying down in uh, Mornington Peninsula, and I couldn't find him afterwards. So he just took off and whatever. But he was, he was, he was that big. He was sitting in the kitchen, his like legs spread out, looking at me. I'm like, Poof. oh my god! I, I, I think he had a knife. I'm not sure. I, I could just imagine my heart stopping just looking at that thing. Hey, Spike, what's that beautiful critter that you showed me before we went on the air? I think it was on the beach. It was so adorable. Oh, this guy. What is it? Oh this my god! Guy? Let hey, me show share you. Share with what our, what our listeners here. He's you gorgeous. Got you got it. You got it. Here we go. How do I do this? Share. Share. Good. Okay. Where is it? You ready? Okay, sharing now. You got it. Here he is. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this, this adorable critter. <laughs> is quokka. Okay, it's called a quokka. Quokka. Q U O K K A. <laughs> uh, it, look, it looks a bit like a squirrel. It is like a happy squirrel. It's <laughs> crazy pants. It's amazing. Do you have yeah, any of them uh, in your uh, neighborhood? No, uh, they're actually in West. Uh, Australia. Uh, they're on a an island uh, off of Perth. Okay. And Perth is far, far west. I've been there a couple of times. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, good wine, by the way. Really? Yeah. Uh, I, I think there's a, uh, you got two oceans wine down there, right? Uh, two what? Two oceans. Two oceans is a wine. I believe it's Australian. We got some hmm. of that stuff up here. That one, I don't wine. know. I mean, there's, there's a ton of wine down here. Uh, and like I said, the Mornington Peninsula, uh, the la we went there actually when we were down in Melbourne, we did a day trip with uh, one of the cast of The Walking Dead had a birthday. So we all went wine tasting over there. And our favorite winery in the world is called Point Leo down oh. there. Yeah, it's south of uh, Melbourne. And uh, yeah, we stayed down there for a week and went wine tasting all over. It was beautiful. But the Barossa Valley off by Adelaide and uh, the Yarra Valley. Um, outside of Melbourne, uh, north. I mean, beautiful places and, and pretty darn good wine. The wine has gotten a lot better since I was here back in like 2007. Okay. And the who's the cast member from The Walking Dead? I'm curious. Uh, Cooper. Um, he is uh, um, uh, Kari Payton is um, the uh, the king uh, with the dreads. And I met Kari at a at a panel at a at a con in uh, New Orleans. Actually, I've uh, known him for a while. And then, and Cooper is his like big bodyguard. And he was also the father in uh, Shazam. Shazam. Uh, okay. Yeah. And what a sweetheart. I mean, such a nice cat. He's and we a had nice so guy. Much fun with him. Do what? He's a nice guy. Oh, so nice. So nice. All of them were great. Ross Marquand was there too. And he's funny as hell. And, uh, who was the other one? The, the girl Cassidy, I think her name was. Lovely people, just okay. lovely. How far into the uh, the episodes? Of which season are you talking about? Because I, I, I probably stopped watching season six. I have uh, to when, catch when, up when they, when they went to the kingdom. 
the guy with the the uh, the tiger. Okay, yeah, yeah, that guy, right? Yeah, that's Kari. Yeah, that's okay. Kari. He does voices for uh, Teen Titans. Really? Yeah, and uh, he, uh, yeah. So his bodyguard, the big guy who's his bodyguard, that's Cooper. Okay. Have you met Crocodile? <laughs> have you met have Crocodile been? Dundee? No, I have not. But I'm telling you, I am on a nostalgia kick down here because <laughs> I'm just like I've been at work in excess. I've got those in my uh, my you know iPod, so I'll be walking around and pop those in if I'm going for a jog, and uh, you know I'm just like, yeah, Crocodile Dundee. I remember that. That's cool. <laughs> uh, there's I think also doing, he's doing a new movie, actually. I think perhaps, yeah. Uh, ACDC are from Australia as well. Yeah, uh, there is a uh, statue. I think is it Bon Scott. I don't. I don't know the names that well, but I think it's Bon Scott has a statue because he's from Perth. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. it's out there in Perth. I've seen it. So okay, so it's Bon Scott. Okay, but this is Angus and Malcolm Young. But Malcolm Young is gone. I think it's his nephew now that took yeah. over because Malcolm got a little sick. Yeah, uh, I, got- I don't know. It's been so long. I mean, I I remember ACDC in the seventies and listening to them, and I'm like, I still think they're amazing. So. Did they shake you all night long back then? All night long, baby. <laughs> all night long. So, uh, um, Spike, I think we're, we're just about at the end of the road over here. Any closing comments? Uh, well, I mean, uh, if you want me to show them uh, my podcast. Sure, um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Basically, guys, check this out. This is my podcast. I'm going to share a couple things with you, so come check me out. Um, okay, so we're going to go right here. Mr. Quaka. Hi, Mr. Quaka. <laughs> I love Quaka. that guy. Get that guy down. So this is my podcast. Okay. It's called the Mind Scrambler Podcast. You can check it out on uh, iTunes. Uh, it's also, you can go to my website, spikespencer.com slash podcast. Uh, that's available. I've got about 30 episodes and ongoing. Uh, and then this is Food Game. Uh, this is uh, the book, Man's Ultimate Recipe for Dating Success. And yes, my wife helped design the cover and she wrote the foreword. Pretty darn cool, I must admit. Nice. And uh, then I have, this is The Reluctant Hero's Journey, uh, which is a membership group. It is not available to actually be a part of now, but uh, it is, I will be putting the wait list together. So if you go on my site, you'll be able to find the link and get on the wait list. I'll open up for membership again in about a month or two, probably. And this is what happens at the con stays at the con of volume two. And yes, all these pictures I took Wow! from conventions and you know, there's me and there's me, <laughs> there's me, <laughs> you know, so I, I'm around. There's me. And, you know, a lot of crazy fun stuff. So uh, awesome, those, are awesome stuff. Things. those are my things. So I put it up here. It's Spike Spencer. Uh, what was that? Dot com? Dot com. Oh. Spike Spencer okay. dot com. Let me write that up again over here. Yeah. And if you just go to Spike Spencer dot com and play around, you'll see coaching. You'll see voiceover. Um, you know, if you have businesses, I do voiceover. You know, I do. You name it, man. I do all kinds of voiceover. Lots of, uh, you know. Uh, industrial stuff and things of that nature, along with crazy voices and public speaking and leadership and mindset and uh, emotional intelligence, EQ, all that sort of thing. Okay. And I do it with several different silly voices from time to time. Yes, same. So how many voices do you evaluate that you can do about? I have no idea. I, I'd say at least 100 that I've done. That I could just look at and go, oh yeah, I've done that, 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 that. that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a crazy world. I my my tagline for you know business and speaking is Spike Spencer talks goofy for a living. Okay, Ser- <laughs> seriously, because <laughs> I do. It's like you know, if I'm doing a corporate event or something, and people want to talk to me, I'm like, it's great, but you're going to have some different voices that are going to pop in from time to time. But don't worry, some of them are quite sexy. <laughs> Hey, Spike, I'm going to ask you to circle a date on your calendar, and that will be the 14th of September because we have a very interesting guest coming on the 14th of September. That's right. I'm going to give you a clue. Who? She's in the house. She's in the house right now. Kim yes. Spencer, your your lovely wife, is going to be our guest on the That's 14th right. of September here in Rob's Inner Circle. Absolutely, and you guys are going to absolutely love her. She's amazing. 
Okay, great. So, Spike, hey, listen, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was actually really fun. Oh, I'm I think actually, really? Did you expect it was really I actually can? absolutely <laughs> definitely <laughs> it was friend. fantastic. It was great. It was a lot of fun, my friend. Hey, so, you come to Montreal, please make sure you notify me. We got to go Jenny have a drink. Will, Jenny will know. Jenny always knows when I'm coming to Montreal. And, and me, you, Jenny, we're going to go for a drink, all right? Hell yeah. Can I count on I you? <laughs> I, I know a couple of places to eat where they got some really good duck. Duck? Mm. I want to go wow. to Alpine de Bichon again, man. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Hey, Spike, the best of success to you and your wife. Have fun down there. Uh, enjoy yourselves. And uh, thanks again for coming on. Uh, do me a favor. Can you please stay on? I'm just going to sign off and say bye to the audience. And uh, I'll be with you in a couple of minutes. All right. Thanks so much. Th bye, everybody. Thanks a lot, Mike. <laughs> Mike? <laughs> Mike? Mike? Good Mike. night, Mike. <laughs> Hang Good night, Mike. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was Spike Spencer, our guest tonight. Wow, what an evening. It was a lot of fun. Spike Spencer, an absolutely talented and funny man. Uh, thanks for joining in. A couple of comments here. Like I said, like I mentioned, uh, Spike's wife, Kim Spencer, is going to be on our show the 14th of September, so you, you don't want to miss that. Next, next week, we have the talented uh, actress and the voice artist, acting coach, and motivational speaker. That's Annick Matern. That's going to be next week, the 31st of uh, August. You don't want to miss that. Stay tuned. And, guys, uh, as I sign off, I thank you very much for tuning in. And one last thing, uh, we ask you to come on the Bobby Short Shorts uh, YouTube channel. Come and uh, watch our productions. Click the like button, comment, subscribe, share, talk about us, and share the love. Guys, as we sign off, I'm going to have my last sip of wine over here. And this is to Spike and his wife in Australia. Uh, Got to love that juice. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next week. Ciao.